This is Serenity, version 2. A plane that was created to learn more about wingtip motors and their effect on aircraft efficiency after version 1 met its demise on a firm dry lake bed surface. Wingtip propulsion is finding new and broader applications in aircraft design thanks to advances in electric power, and I wanted to find out what all the hype is about. Let me explain. Electric propulsion is becoming a reality for full-scale aircraft, and the small size and lack of vibration of electric motors compared to the combustion engines they replace makes various motor placements around the aircraft possible that were previously impractical. Because the various motor placements can positively impact all-around performance, especially efficiency, different combinations are being tried out to get the most out of electric aircraft. One motor placement possibility that can directly affect efficiency is the wingtip. To understand why this is, we need to know a little bit more about what happens when the force keeping an airplane in the air, lift, is generated. When lift is generated, something called induced drag is also created. Induced drag is the result of pressure equalization between higher pressure under the wing and lower pressure above the wing. It shows up in the vortex you can sometimes see coming off the end of a wing. A bigger and stronger vortex is the result of more induced drag and indicates reduced overall efficiency. A common way to reduce induced drag is to increase the aspect ratio of the wing, which is the ratio of the length of the wing to its cord, or width. This reduces the spanwise component of lift generation along the wing and weakens the vortex formation. So what does this have to do with propellers on wingtips? After doing research for the first Serenity project, it appears that in normal situations, a prop rotating outwards from the top effectively increases the aspect ratio of the wing by moving the wingtip vortex further out. In the last video on wingtip motors, I simply compared central motors against outwardly rotating wingtip motors. The results were within the margin of error given the non-scientific conditions, and the results were further complicated by comparing wingtip motors to winglets. This time I endeavored to give a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison, and also to try some of the suggestions from the comments you guys left. I began putting the new airframe together, this time a little larger but still using all the techniques that are typical for this channel namely a soft Kevlar application over expanded polypropylene foam. It is really durable, which came in handy on the maiden flight attempt. And then it was ready. All the controls were checked on the bench, and it was go time. Taking my drone off, off the drone, because that's the only place to do it. Apparently one of the speed controllers would only go to about 30% throttle before shutting off. After figuring out that it was not a calibration issue, the speed controller was replaced and life was again copacetic. It is at this point I'd also like to give a shout out to the 10,000 or so comments in the last video pointing out the problem this configuration presents if there is a power problem to one side. It is a valid concern. I would, however, like to point out that you probably haven't once considered the quadcopter getting all the air-to-air -air shots you've enjoyed thus far, has twice the critical failure points, and is now such a common vehicle that no one thinks anything of it. A few test flights were needed to make sure everything was functioning properly before putting Serenity to work. So Serenity's on her way in. Let's bring her home. Good job, girl. Welcome home, girl. You did so good. You did good. Uh, give me a break. Over the next three days, starting before dawn each morning, Serenity put down 180 kilometers to get some good average numbers for the wingtip configuration, with the prop spinning outward from the top of rotation.
After 360 kilometers worth of miles on the airframe, the results were in. The outward rotating motors were 7.2% more efficient than the inward rotating motors. A pretty clear result even if we aren't in laboratory conditions. But is this telling us what we think it is? My last test in the video makes me wonder. Okay guys, so we're just going to fiberglass these tips here and then paint it and it'll be ready to go for the wingtip tractor configuration. Some of you suggested a tractor configuration would be more efficient, and this is where the project started going sideways. Literally. What are you doing, baby? So we had some problems with the tractor configuration. The plane went to yaw all the time, and I troubleshot that for a couple days. Didn't really work out. So to keep the project moving on, we are moving the motors to the center. That's what I'm doing now. Putting the structure in place mount the motors in the center and I guess we will come back a later time and experiment with the tractor for another day. Okay. So I guess there will be one more video about all this. So we have one more experiment on top of that. Unless you guys dropped a lot of comments like last time, which we'll add a whole bunch more. So don't do that. I mean comment, but The tractor motor configuration was good at digging into the dirt on landing. So before I mounted the motors in the central motor configuration, I took them apart to clean them. And this is where I realized my mistake, as the motor bell was secured with a screw instead of a C-clip, and thus I had just changed the resistance on the bell, as it was extremely unlikely that the screw was replaced exactly as tight as before I removed it. So what you are watching is basically the beginning of the next video. However, I could still possibly get one useful piece of information after making this critical error. Some of the comments in the last video stated that due to this being a swept flying wing, the vortex at the tip of the wing would actually be rotating the opposite direction. This is because the twist in the wing is causing the wing tips to act as the horizontal stabilizer on a conventional plane, forcing the nose up to counteract the mass in front of the neutral point. While my computer predicted at cruising speed this would not be the case, I wanted to visualize this for myself to see what the situation actually was. In the last video with the wingtip props rotating outwards, the vortex was also clearly moving outwards, which I attributed to the prop redirecting wingtip airflow. Due to a very poor choice of camera mounting positions making the plane too difficult for the autopilot to compensate for on launch, I was not able to get a good visualization of the wingtip vortex with centrally mounted motors. This time I got it right and was able to get the video I was after, and I was in for a surprise. The vortex was still clearly rotating outward at the tip without a propeller redirecting the airflow. While this was expected at high speed and low angle of attack, I did not expect to see that at cruising speed which was best approximated near the end of the smoke run. At no point during the smoke run did the vortex redirect to rotate inwards as you would expect on a conventional aircraft. This would indicate that the vortex due to lift generation is still there rotating outward, but further inboard on the wing. The vortex we are seeing here is from the rear part of the wing pushing down, pulling the nose up. This may come down to a question of propeller pitch meeting the incoming airflow, since due to the rotating nature of the vortex, the inward and outward spinning propellers are seeing a different inflow angle. So a mystery remains as to what is going on in this particular case. Are we effectively extending the wing and its aspect ratio? Did one rotation direction simply have a more ideal propeller pitch angle relative to the oncoming airstream? This mystery cannot stand, along with whether or not the tractor configuration is more efficient, but we will have to wait for another video.